Tony Estremera, Legal Aid Society, and Santa Clara Valley Water District. Paul Guerrero, Executive Board of the Rosa Roundtable. I'm your representative on the high speed rail. Del Villalobos, uh, retired from the Provincial Department, now used to be a former uh, deputy sheriff down in Southern California. <coughs> Richard Santos, Director of Santa Clara Valley Water District. B. Mendez, uh, Council on Aging, now known as SourceWise, and we provide services to our Elders. Laura Colunga, Department of Planning and Development for Santa Clara County. Raul Colunga, I'm the lucky guy that gets to take her home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Juvenile Justice Commissioner and also a founding member of La Raza Roundtable. Hilda Morales, Program Manager for Conexión Sprite Futures. Barry Corona, I was a student at the Pettis High School at uh, Bright Futures. Mariana <coughs> Garcia, Overfall High School and Bright Futures. <coughs> Jennifer Sanchez, Overfell, okay. and Bright Futures. Max Magadan, uh, Overfell High School, and Bright Futures. Danica Mendoza, um, recently a college student at Evergreen <coughs> Valley College, and um, with Bright Futures. Barbara Keegan, Chair, Santa Clara Valley Water District Board. Luis Hernandez, Keller Williams Realty. Anaceli Garza, Mid Penn Housing. Eduardo Mostara, Professor, UC Santa Cruz. Danny Garza, Chapter Chair, MAPA, Mexican American Political Association. Osvaldo Ruelas Gomez, the Foundation for Hispanic Education. Jesus Rios, Director for the Roberto Cruz Leadership Academy with the Foundation for Hispanic Education. <coughs> David Lopez with the Foundation for Hispanic Education, formerly the National Hispanic University and continuing Dr. Cruz's mission and vision of educating Latinos in your community. Juan Rodriguez, a former student at RCLA, Roberto Cruz Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Castellan Castellanos, former student of RCLA. Lee Gardner, job developer for the Washoe Tribe of Nevada and California. Daryl Cortez, executive director, shop with the Cop Foundation, Silicon Valley. <laughs> Jesus Nava, Chief Administrative Officer with the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Greg Nichols, San Jose Chapter of the American GI Forum. Hi, Norberto Duena, City Manager, City of San Jose. Hi, Eddie Garcia, Acting Chief of the City of San Jose. And this is my new best friend, the IPA, the Independent Police Auditor, Walter Cass. <laughs> I don't know this guy. <laughs> 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 Martinez Barrientos. I'm an analyst and outreach specialist with the Independent Police Auditor. <clears throat> Rick Pasqua, Cherokee Paiute, Modoc, and Executive Board Member of the Ross Roundtable. Thank you. Uh, Dennis King, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Adam Escoto, retired educator. John Varela, Vice Chair, Santa Clara Valley Water District. Robert De Jesus, Assistant Chief Probation. Chris Ariola with the District Attorney's Office and also La Raza Lawyers. Bob Nayas, Melpitas Unified School District Board of Trustees, uh, Chair, Republican Party, Santa Clara County. Sergio Jimenez, I'm the Chair of the San Jose Parks Commission and I am running for office, San Jose City Council District 2. Uh, Nino Lucido, Silicon Valley GOP. Bert Lancaster and I'm running for Congressional Seat 19. Sammy Castillo, community activist. Madison Nguyen, San Jose, former San Jose Vice Mayor, also a candidate for California State Assembly, District 27. Jess Hawkins, Western Academy. I'm Ro Kana, I'm a candidate for Congress. Bob Minacucci, County Social Services. Robert Aguirre, running for the Border of Cup Winds. Sandra Cruz, Community Outreach, Associate for Service, Immigrant Rights and Education Network, Siren. 
Robert Rubio, uh, volunteer staff coordinator for Madison and Wynn. Uh, Bill Britton, uh, field consultant for Solar City. Uh, Victor Gomez, director of public policy for the San Jose Silicon Valley Chamber of Commerce. Jesse Quijada, staffer for Councilmember Magdalena Carrasco. Peter Allen, chair of the City of San Jose Arts Commission, former managing director at Teatro Vision de San Jose, and candidate for District 6, San Jose City Council. I'm Mike Rodriguez, Santa Clara Valley Water District, and local educator. Angie Briones, Connexion to Community and Castellano Family Foundation. Jose Salcido, Office of Johnny Camus, District 10, City of San Jose. Alex Flores, uh, Connexion Board Member. Racing Castañeda, Sabor del Valle. We'll see what Trinidad Native Town of Program. Hi, Joe Melendez from Liquid uh, Restaurant. Lisette Morales, Bright Features, a, prog a mentoring program of Connexion. <coughs> Uh, Dennis Harris, YB Bright Features. Jose Perez, YB Bright Features. Right, my name is Mandy Lamas, and I'm a retired social worker from Chavez Technical Services. Rudy Chavez Medina with the Chavez Family Vision. Michael Hingle, Avogado de Defensia. Deb Davis, candidate for District 6. <coughs> Isaac Pichardo, Events Committee Chair for La Raza Roundtable and Executive Director for the Santa Clara County Republican Party. Michelle Dieterich, Public Defender's Office. Sam Hall with San Jose Evergreen Community College District. And Debbie Budd, Chancellor of the San Jose Evergreen Community College District. And Enrique Maciel, Recruiter for United Site Services. David Massa, uh, Educator. Elaine Ortiz Christich, Evergreen <coughs> Valley College and LASIC Program. Idea Burton, Evergreen Valley College and LASIC Program, Co Chair and Counseling Faculty. Hernandez. Uh, I'm a secretary for Evergreen Valley College, and as a student. Jocelyn Salazar, Evergreen Valley College uh, Student Association, and as a student association vice president. Uh, Isaiah Lopez, I'm the president of the Alaska Student Association at Evergreen Valley College. Steve Brown, candidate for city council, San Jose District 2. Aaron Resendez, a member of the Santa Clara County Planning Commission and also a member of San Jose Police Chief Advisory Board and board member of San Jose Police Activity League. Monica Amador, retired and sit on several boards. Marcy Green, trustee on the Santa Clara County Board of Education and La Raza Roundtable's endorsed candidate for State Assembly, Assembly District 27. Frank Beal, trustee, Eastside Union High School District. Patricia Govea, social entrepreneur. Rose Amador, CEO of Connection to Community and co-chair of the Lassa Roundtable, host of Native Voice TV. Patty Cortez, Eastside Union High School uh, Board of Trustees, and this is a far out of Steve Chavez, member of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Johnny Camus, San Jose City Council member, District 10. And my name is Victor Gershley, I'm your chair. Thank you. Again, Frank Beal, trustee, Eastside Union High School District. Really pleased that we have several of our other fellow trustees here today. And on their behalf, I just want to report on one statistic of improvement for education for Latino students at the East Side. This is a measurement of students that are enrolling in a class other than integrated science, biology, or chemistry. They're entering, basically, this means that they're of, uh, that they have uh, become, uh, that they're taking a class at a higher level science. This is a very good way to measure their success in the fu in future success in college. So three years ago we had 23 percent of our Hispanic students uh, accessing these classes. Uh, the year before last we had 26 percent and last year we had 33 percent. And this is a remarkable improvement. We have a ways to go. The district average is 47%, but we're moving in the right direction to make sure that we have access uh, to, uh, to college uh, and success for all of our students, and particularly those of our Hispanic uh, heritage. Thank you. I just want to say that without the community support and the many people here who have attended community chancellor's breakfast meetings, uh, and of the support from the community, our college district would not have been as strong as it is today. And among us are great friends, great people of Santa Clara County. And for the past 15, 16 years, I've been attending this at the Razor Round Table. It's a family to me, big brother, big sister, brother and sister to me, family to me, and under the leadership with Victor Garza, 
we cannot find a better man in Santa Clara County to talk, bring our community together like Mr. Mr. Garza. So that's what they're for. really busy group tonight, so I'll just say a few words. Thank you for welcoming me. Um, we are so excited, as I mentioned, with the work happening at Evergreen Valley College. In addition, San Jose City <coughs> College is a Hispanic-serving institution that received a $2.5 million grant uh, last year to increase our success of our students. And looking at everybody here and seeing all of the trustees, one of my main goals would be to increase the high school to college pathways. Being a community supported district, we absolutely could help set up partnerships so that students could actually graduate high school with their high school diploma and their AA degree at the same time. We have incredible faculty, great technology partnerships. We're just developing a new uh, tech certificate. And I just look forward to getting the chance to meet all of you and see how we can continue to grow as partners. And thank you for having this meeting and welcoming me. Good evening, everyone. Um, so over the Martin Luther King weekend, we took Bright Futures took um, 80 individuals up to Walden West, and we had an amazing retreat. Um, uh, upon our arrival, uh, we had a room for about 150 people where kids shared what they got out of the program. And today, I just wanted to give a youth an opportunity to share a little bit about what his experience has been at camp and for Bright Futures as a program. My name is Dennis Harris. Um, what I got out of the program was I got to find the real me. I got to um, like express my feelings without having to be scared. Uh, I had a I had a group full of individuals that that I know that that believed in me and that wanted me to succeed. So that's why I gave it my all and 100%. I let it all loose. Um, so I wanna I just wanna say this made, this program to me was really amazing. It was really eye opening. I was I was ecstatic to know that I, I can I can actually I, I'm, I'm a human I, I can mess up and I know that I can I can develop and I can move on from it. So I want to thank my life coaches and the people that were there for me that supported me the whole time through. And yeah, this, this program is really good. Well, I'm here to represent the probation department, and I'm going to be very brief. Uh, First and foremost, I want to just mention what the population is of the juvenile hall. It is something that has been uh, near and dear to my heart as well as this community. I can tell you that the population of juvenile hall has remained under 100 for the past two months. This is a, a facility with a capacity of 390 beds, and today's population is 93. So. Also, what I want to do is leave uh, a couple of brochures out here. Uh, this is uh, in reference to our adult probation division. We've got uh, family of friends, peer support groups uh, to help those folks uh, with mental health uh, disorders, also uh, veterans. I'm going to leave those out here. Also uh, moral recognition therapy, uh, women's groups, and I'm going to leave those out here as well for any of those uh, folks uh, who would be interested in uh, providing those to somebody they care about. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I apologize for being a few minutes late. We have a little event that's uh, going to be next Sunday called Super Bowl. Um, we have uh, a team arriving uh, on Sunday, and I was getting uh, briefed on uh, they were saying at the Marriott, the, the Panthers, so it's getting a little that. So um, I know that my uh, pastoral duties for La Raza were given away tonight, but I'll do next month. I'll make sure that, uh, that I'm here. Uh, Quickly, uh, one of the things that we're very proud of uh, in the spirit of transparency, you know, we put out our limited detention data uh, for our car stops and our pedestrian stops that we had done. And a lot of the stories that came out about the disproportionate amount of uh, people that were getting stopped, well, we're proud to say that with uh, a lot of support from the community and with our IPA that we've selected a group that's going to come in and study our, our stops. Um, they're going to come in. It's a very, very uh, thorough process with focus groups, uh, with ride-alongs, with interviews of officers, looking at our policies, looking at the data itself. Uh, and at the end of that, the data is going to show us where, we're, where can we do better, what we're doing right, and we're going to stand tall to it, and then stand tall in front of you and say, here's what we did, here's our mistakes, and here's how we're going to move forward. And so that's, uh, we're very proud of that. Um, you know, it's a good segue now. I know Walter's going to speak in a few minutes, and I know I jokingly said he's my new best friend. 
Uh, and I say that jokingly because quite honestly, it's not going to be an adversarial relationship. We're both after the same goal. It has to make this police department serve the residents and bring the city back to the safest, largest city in the country. So, you know, uh, we're operating in time. I'm going to take one of Walter's lines. We're operating times right now of non crisis in the city. We have to stay, at ste stay four steps ahead. Uh, our heads are not in the sand about the reforms and the changes we can make this department better. And I think Walter and I can figure that out. So, uh, we have a great IPA. And with that, Walter, come on up. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This is my first uh, meeting with all of you, first time seeing many of you, and I really appreciate the welcome. Yes, uh, there is some news. Uh, there's a new police chief. Uh, there is uh, myself, the new independent uh, police auditor, and I am here to tell you that we're open for business. We moved about a month ago. Uh, you can now find us at 152 North 3rd Street, right next to St. James Park, up on the 6th floor. Uh, we're open for business uh, to talk to the people of San Jose who feel they may not have a voice, if they have an issue with how they think they were treated or their contact with the police. And we are here for one simple job. The chief told us what that is, uh, to make the city better. And there's a pretty high standard. I know that uh, your honored guest here tonight, Mayor Bay Ragosa, was my mayor in Los Angeles for eight years. So I couldn't be more proud than to have this man speak to you tonight, listen to every word. He did a fantastic job as a mayor, and I know his future is bright. <laughs> I'm Dennis King, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. It's been an honor to host and manage the first small business development center, Hispanic Satellite, in the nation. And we do so in great appreciation from our sponsors, our mentors, uh, the County Board of Supervisors, particularly our heroes here, uh, Supervisor Cindy Chavez and Supervisor Dave Cortez. The numbers are coming in from last year. We did help over 3,000 people coming to our workshops. Workshops were organized by Mimi Hernandez, and they were in Spanish, English, Mandarin, and Vietnamese. We helped over 60 businesses get started, which in turn created over 600 jobs. These are mom and pop jobs throughout our community. Um, we also rescued about 333 jobs that were in small businesses that were under some kind of threat um, and that we were able to provide services for them to be able to continue. So again, we greatly appreciate the support from the County Board of Supervisors in term, on your behalf about economic development. Thank you. That's the legislative report. Uh, last week in Sacramento, there was a legislative uh, or a Latino Leaders Conference. And I wanted to mention that Darcy Green got an award of excellence at that conference. We should all give her a hand for the work she's done. The other thing I want to mention, we have uh, a lot of Hispanics here that are running for city council and various offices. We have a supervisor here, a Hispanic supervisor, and we have a Hispanic councilman. And way back before these people were elected, we didn't have district elections. The elections were at large, and the council was all white. There were no Hispanics on the council. There were no blacks on the council. And a Hispanic lawyer, Joaquin Avila, decided to sue the city of Watsonville and bring district elections in, into place. And he won that suit, and he was appealed, and he won the appeal. And the various groups picked up the cause, and they sued in San Jose, and they sued Sacramento, they sued Stockton, they sued all these various cities and put district elections into place. That's why we have Latinos on our council right now. That's why we have them on our board of supervisors, because of Joaquin. And right now, Joaquin is very sick. And there's a GoFundMe account for him to help support his medical bills. And so I urge you all to go to GoFundMe online and donate five, ten, twenty, a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars to Joaquin's medical expenses. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Ariola with the DA's office. And on behalf of uh, District Attorney Jeff Rosen, uh, I just wanted to let you know some things we're doing. Uh, not just to enforce uh, the laws and keep our community safe, which we'll always do with the wonderful help of the police department, but also to prevent crime. The last three years, we've had a community prosecutor assigned to Overfelt High School uh, over on the east side, and uh, 
reason was we had more kids on probation and cited out of that high school than any high school in the county. Working with the probation and police department and the school district, we were able to cut the total number of citations in 18 months over the course of the following year from 635 to 320 by referring kids to diversion programs on campus, and I hope that number will be even lower, close to 200 this year. If we can keep kids out of the system, they'll do much better. We're expanding the community prosecution unit and prevention programs. We have a community prosecutor in Gilroy. We're going to have one at Gilroy High School, where we also have a high number of arrests and citations. We're going to keep the program at Overfelt and also in the Washington neighborhood and the Burbank neighborhood. So we're very excited about the prevention programs. And true to his word, the district attorney came in here, and in the last five years, uh, our office was 7% Latino when he took office. It's now almost 16% uh, Latino, uh, including this last class he hired uh, of nine attorneys, four of whom were Latino, coming through our outreach and internship program. So. Uh, good evening. Hello, my name is Maricela Gutierrez. I'm the executive director of SIREN. SIREN is an immigrant rights organization here um, in San Jose, but we do work uh, national policy, statewide and local. Um, our big fight this year is obviously the Supreme Court. And we're going to be looking to all of you um, for us to prevail in June. And so we'll be doing a handful of actions, advocacy, going down to uh, DC, um, and we'll be putting out information. Please check out our website. Um, on that same vein, we're also organizing a big voter, um, a robust voter engagement project, um, partnering with Univision and some Asian language media um, to do voter engagement, but not only registering people to vote, but also getting people to the polls. So we're getting them. And then I want to introduce Sandra. Hi, everyone. Buenas noches. My name is Sandra. I do community outreach for SIREN. Uh, we have amazing workshops coming up where we provide free eligibility screening, uh, free form filling, and we do a final review for anybody that is interested, especially uh, in the DACA program. This service usually ranges up to $800, so we encourage anybody in the community that is interested in applying for this to um, to be referred to these workshops. If you're interested, we're also open to do uh, presentations at the different schools, community centers, even for your staff to learn more about DACA, uh, DAPA, uh, Know Your Rights, especially uh, is a big hit in the community and uh, the community knowing their rights. Uh, if any police agency goes to their, knocks on their home, especially with ICE, so please contact us if you're interested in, in us hosting a workshop for your community. Thank you. Don Victor, and our elected officials. Thank you. My name is David Lopez. I was mentioned earlier the National Hispanic University, so that you know the National Hispanic University has now pivoted, which is a word used here in Silicon Valley, to a preschool to college pipeline in partnership with Santa Clara University on our campus. So we do have four and five year olds on that campus today. We have Santa Clara on our campus. And the reason why I'm up here is I'd like to say that on April 30th, we're having the first annual Latino Education Summit on the Santa Clara campus. And all of you are invited. We have intellectuals, we have academics, we have people from the local community and the district. What's going to be real interesting, folks, and I'm sure Mayor Villarosa would appreciate this, we're bringing charter schools together with districts and others and putting our politics and leaving them at the door and focusing on the students, the parents, and community to make sure that Latinos are educated and make sure that teachers are prepared to do so. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bon Lane, I'm East Side School Board Trustee. I have to say that I'm very proud of our East Side student. We have a good report of English learners and we improve so much. Besides that, uh, I want to announce that we have a lot of talented students. Last week we have a, a, a dance festival which is in the seventh grade, we will have um, um, the band festival and also guitar festival. So please uh, look into our website and you can join us. Also, I want to say that uh, it's coming next week, uh, we will celebrate Tet Festival, which is Vietnamese uh, New Year's. Mayor so, San Ricardo, go to you. Uh, well, first, I just wanted to welcome uh, Mayor Villarosa back to San Jose. Good to have you always, and you're always welcome here. Um, I also wanted to announce, as if you didn't already know, we've got a new police chief in San Jose. 
uh, Eddie Garcia, and I think all of you know Eddie well. And, Eddie, and uh, we are looking for bright, talented young women and men in the community, and we are hiring. And so please do all you can to reach out when you see promising people of good character uh, and refer them to any of us. Let's get them in the pipeline. We need the best and brightest out there in blue. So please help us in that effort. Uh, I just want to announce we are officially launched now with what we call San Jose Learns. San Jose is getting back into the after school business. Uh, with Councilmember Johnny Camus and the rest of the council, we invested $2 million uh, just in this pilot period. We're going to be hopefully investing more if we can prove success with a lot of other foundations and partners. Uh, identifying 13 schools in the poorest neighborhoods where we're expanding after school programs and we're going to keep it going with your partnership and your help. Thank you. The brand new District 1 in the Santa Clara Valley Water District Director, John Varela. Well, thank you. Victor. Thank you. Now, this is my first board meeting here and I want to tell you I'm excited. This is such an amazing group of leadership and decision makers, but I also have a little concern. There are four water district directors in the room. That's why I'm sitting in the back. There's a Brown Act violation. I've got to be very careful <laughs> for my first meeting. So please, please be gentle on me. So I also want to say to you tonight that I'm going to announce that I'm a candidate for District 1 of the Water District, and I want you to all to be aware of that, and I all want you to help me win that seat. So thank you very much, and I really appreciate being here tonight, and uh, meeting. I'll be meeting most of you people at one point or another. Thank you. Volando con la brisa va. Volando con la brisa va. Volando con las blancas nubes, con las nubes blancas que vienen y van. Sus manos se abran al pasar. Sus manos se abran al pasar. Sus manos como dos. Hermanos que han 